All right, night for a review. I'll grab my magic work marker so we can do the corrections. First three questions are algebra. It said negative 2x minus 5 equals negative 9. We all know we have two step algebra equations with both coefficient and constant. The first thing we should always get rid of is your constant. You're adding or subtracting value that's on the same side as the variable. We're going to add 5 to both sides to create a zero pair of negative 2x equals negative 4. We now have a one-step algebraic equation with just a coefficient or a multiplier of the x value by negative 2. In order to get a multiply by negative 2 gone, you're going to divide by negative 2 on both sides. You're going to end up with x equals a negative divided by negative is positive, 4 divided by 2 is 2. Second question, again, we have a negative half of x minus 3 equals 0. We're going to add 3 to both sides to create an algebraic zero pair with a constant leaving with a negative half of x equals 3. I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 2, the opposite of dividing by negative 2, and x equals negative 6. I just realized what I forgot to do. Question 3 says solve two ways. So the first way we could do it is by, what's this called? What's that E word? Distributive property. What's the distributive property E word? Answer. We're going to expand it using distributive property. And negative 2 times x, if I asked you what 2 times x is, what would you tell me? Everybody. 2x. What if I said negative 2 times x? It's negative 2x. The next question is the tricky part, and a lot of you grades get it wrong. What's negative 2 times negative 5? Positive 10. So because it's positive 10, that's going to become a plus 10 as my expanded constant. Once I do that, I'm going to subtract 10 from both sides because now I have a simple two-step equation. Negative 2x equals negative 22. Divide by the coefficient of negative 2, and x will equal a positive 11. That's solving by expansion, which is important. But the simpler way, and I'll grab my blue marker now, <clears throat> instead of having negative 2 groups of x minus 5, if I divide both sides by negative 2, I'll have one group of x minus 5 is equal to positive 6. Once I have that, it's just a one-step equation of adding 5 to both sides, and x equals 11. Obviously, if you look at the blue path versus the red path, the blue path was the simpler way to get the answer. But both paths are important to know. Our right, next question is a fraction question. It's 1 and a half divided by 3. Now, we said before, and I think I said to a very intelligent young Jack there, that when you divide by 3, that's dividing by 3 over 1. Same thing as 3, it's 3 over 1. And we all agreed when we did this, the easiest way to get the answer to a division question was actually change the multiplication and use the reciprocal of the second fraction. So the reciprocal of 3, since 3 is 3 over 1, is actually a third. Now that I have that, I convert my mixed fraction to a proper. What would a smart person look for? Cross reduction when we're multiplying. Is there an ability to cross reduce here? Yeah. There is. And I could do it like this, and I'd end up with a half. Now, if I didn't cross reduce that, I'd end up with 3 times 1 over 2 times 3, which is 3 over 6, which still reduces down to 1 over 2 as your final answer. Next question 4 fifths times 3, which is actually an easier question. Because remember, 3 is really 3 over 1. So, really, what we have here is this question, 4 over 5 times 3 over 1. Because you're multiplying, check for cross-reduction. Can't be done. Multiply your numerators, you get 12. Multiply your denominators, you get 5. The final answer is 2 and 2 fifths as a mixed fraction. Next question is a bed mass involving division and addition. We know that when we do uh, any question that has more than one operation, we need to follow bed mass. So, 1 30th plus whatever this is going to be. And this is actually going to be 2 thirds multiplied by its reciprocal. Can't reduce crossways, so we're just going to multiply that out. We have 1 over 30 equals, or plus, excuse me, 16 over 15. Now, I'm not going to change 16 over 15 to a mixed fraction. That would be silly. Because what I am going to do, though, is because I'm adding, I require what? I need a common denominator. And 30 happens to be a beautiful one that can be made into both 1 over 30 and 16 over 15. 1 over 30 stays 1 over 30. 16 15 becomes 32 30ths. Those are equivalent fractions. Remember, 
we would have multiplied both numerator and denominator by 2 to create an equivalent fraction. Once we have that, we're going to add our numerators and keep our denominator. And our final answer is 33 tertiates, which is 1 and 3 tertiates, which in lowest terms is 1 and a tenth. So our final answer for that question is 1 and a tenth. Our next question is uh, a rate of a dollar eighty to four or something. And the question really is asking, even though it's not written that way, how much is it to five? So the first way to solve three ways. The first way is I want to know what do I multiply four by to get five? Now, if you're having trouble thinking about what you multiply by, remember, if it was an easier question like this, what did you multiply two by to get ten? Five. So if you wanted to, because you know it's times five, you could have taken this number, divided by this number, to get this number. So if that's true, then this number divided by this number should be this number. Do you all agree with that idea? So five divided by four is 1.25, which means our multiplier is 1.25, 1.25. Take my calculator. Say dollar eighty. One point eight multiplied by one point two five is two point two five. So therefore, it's two dollars and twenty five cents for five of them. That's method one. That's the multiply divide method. The second method you could have done is called the unit rate method. If it's a dollar eighty for four, we're going to check to see how much it is for one. We're going to do so by doing both, both terms here, dividing by. Four. Therefore, the cost of one will be 45 cents. And $1.80 divided by two is 90 cents. 90 cents divided by two again is 45 cents. So that's 45 cents for one. And then you get it back up to five. Multiply both terms by five. And 45 cents times five is 2.25. What's the third way? Algebra, correct. A dollar eighty for four is equal to how many for five? Four x equals five plus four nine. One eighty times five, I think, is nine, isn't it? Times five equals nine. Divide both sides by four. And x equals two point two. Next question, fraction, decimals, and percents. Let's make this a little bit there. That looks uh, abnormally large. Uh, so four-fifths, we're asked to change it to a decimal. What's the easiest way to change a fraction to a decimal? How do you change a fraction to a decimal? What's your process? Say again. And then you put a what? Okay. So what Taya said... Well, she does this, and then she does this, and then she does this. Is that right? Which is all equivalent fractions, which is fine. Uh, where does it tell you what the decimal is? First, second, or third fraction? Third. The third one. It says 80 hundredths, right? And if I think about decimal positions of this A, B, and C, which decimal place or which place value is my hundredths, A, B, or C? C, B, right? B is my hundredths. It goes tenths, then it goes hundredths, then it goes thousandths. That C is the thousandths, that B is the hundredths, that A is the... Right. So because B is your hundredths position, this 80 has to end in this position. 80 has to end in the hundredths position, so our decimal is going to be zero, decimal eight, zero, or, or simply zero decimal eight. Now, there's another way we could have done that. We could have taken our four-fifths and made it into an equivalent fraction out of ten. What's the equivalent fraction out of ten? Eight. And if I say eight-tenths, then eight-tenths as a decimal is this decimal with a zero. Yeah. Now, super people, there's certain super people here that are like, I don't need to know any of that. I don't need to know any of that because I know how to change all fractions to decimal for the calculator. And that would be to take the numerator and divide it by the denominator. 
And if you are a said person, and you go 5 divided, 4 divided by 5, it will still tell you it's 8 tenths, right? Which is really beneficial. But 8 tenths, as Taya told us, is actually 80 hundredths. And since percentages are fractions out of 100, then 80, 8 tenths is actually 80%. You get 4 to 5 in tenths on a test. Now, if I was to write this one, how would I pronounce this number? 5 hundredths. 5 hundredths. Because I read it properly, I could write it properly. 5 over 100. And what I probably should have told you is make sure this hunter is in lowest terms. So in lowest terms, that would be 1 over 20. Both of those fractions are correct. The nice thing about 5 hundredths is it helps you get the percentage right away. So 5 hundredths is 5 percent. <clears throat> this is, as a fraction, easy to write because 12 percent is simply 12 out of 100. In lowest terms, both are divisible by 4. It's 3 25ths in lowest terms. And finally, as a decimal, 12 hundredths, there's my hundredths position, and 12 has to end there, so 12 hundredths is written as 0 over 1. Our last question is an integer question. Is this our last one? Yeah? Our last question is an integer question. It says, this times this times this times this, all divided by this. So negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6. Negative, or positive 6 times negative 4 is negative 24. And negative 4 times negative 5 is positive 120. So positive 120 divided by negative 10 will... 120 divided by 10 is 12, and a positive divided by a negative is a negative.